What is up, Sooner Nation? Welcome back to the Sooner Surge. Thanks for being a subscriber to our channel. If you haven't checked out the Fan Stop, check out thefanstop.com. Use code SURGE. Get 10% off your first three months of the Shirt of the Month Club. OU softball back in action tonight, 6 o'clock, uh, first pitch. You can catch that on ESPN+. Plus. It'll be interesting. I know we'll talk about it here on this video about who may get the start, but uh, playing UTA, University of Texas, Arlington, a record of 10 and 16 on the year. OU's dominated this series the last five times out. And Hunter, kind of what's what are you expecting tonight there at Love's Field? Yeah, uh, UT Arlington only has one pitcher with a sub three ERA, and that is Jessica Adams. You would expect her to get the start, 279 for them. And ev everything else is every other pitcher that qualifies is over a six ERA. They've, they've had a rough start to the year. They're one and one in conference play. They split with uh, Cal Baptist last weekend. But, uh, yeah, lineup, not a home run threat. I think they have 13 home runs on the year. Uh, Camille Corona uh, leads the team in batting average. And then they have Lindsey Franklin, who isn't far behind at 389 with four home runs and the most RBIs on the team as well. But before I continue on with that, I also want to mention – uh, we'll drop this link in the description of the video. You can join our March Madness Tournament Challenge. Uh, be sure to fill it out. March Madness starts tomorrow. Have to have your bracket submitted before then, so you got a little bit of time. But, yeah, midweek matchup that I think is favorable for the Sooners. Back at Love's Field before you go to Hall of Fame Stadium on Friday for Baylor that dropped down to 19 or 22, depending on the poll, and then – uh, two more at Love's Field this weekend against them. Yeah, and everyone's been looking, kind of circling the Baylor matchup, and rightfully so, but Baylor did uh, not do so well against Kansas. But, oh, you need to take care of business tonight. The interesting thing I think about uh, in, in these midweek matchups is who's who are the Sooners, who's Gasso, Coach Roach are going to throw out there tonight. I, for one, would like to see Monticelli or, or – uh, Carly Keeney, uh, get the nod tonight. It seems like on the weekend, it's probably going to be Maxwell deal may. That's what they've kind of been rolling with. But you mentioned, I know we talked off, off air here, Hunter, about, uh, last week was Tuesday, Friday when they did the Maxwell, this is Wednesday, Friday. So less rest. Uh, so I, I don't know. I I'm leaning maybe toward Keeney. I wouldn't mind Keeney or Monticelli getting the start and you can really go Keeney Monticelli Garen. If you wanted to use a three pitcher, uh, rotation tonight. Yeah, I would think the expectation on the pitching side of things is to get through this game in five innings, be able to get that eight run lead offensively, uh, lose use as little pitching as possible. As you got Baylor on Friday, going to be an emotional game at Hall of Fame Stadium. I mean, Baylor beat Oklahoma last year; they were the only team to do so. So that that's a matchup that you really or everyone has been looking forward to. It's one of the bigger conference matchups for Oklahoma this year. So, yeah, Carly Keeney, I, I think that kind of makes the most sense as a starter uh, and maybe go 2-2-1 two, two, or something like that or 3-1-1. One, one. We've seen that a lot, like three innings for your starter, one and one out of the pen. Uh, yeah, Kelly Maxwell got the midweek start last week, but as you mentioned, that was on Tuesday. Then they Friday Texas Tech uh, was able got the start there as well, uh, and that was also a doubleheader where it's it's a lot different on how you she got the first game on Tuesday it was like four thirty the second game was six thirty uh, something like that so it, it it'll be interesting to see uh, who it is I would like to see Monticelli I just don't think she will get a start anytime soon for Oklahoma. Yeah, and we know Carly Keeney is is used to going uh, a lot of innings, uh, somewhere near the top of the nation last year in innings pitch. So she can definitely throw some today and throw some more on the weekend. Uh, you talk about on the hitting side of things, Hunter, really against the Texas Tech Red Raiders, it was the seniors that kind of stole the show as far as standing out. And uh, I know uh, we talked, Alina Torres has a six-game six hitting streak going into this game. Uh, she's been better. And really, though, what what you can't overlook, even though the seniors definitely stood out, specifically Tiari Jennings against the Red Raiders, Cassidy Pickering and Ella Parker, the freshmen, still played really, really well. So yeah, that that's one thing that you got to take away from every game is even when the seniors tried to steal the show, 
the freshmen are right there like, hey, we're still here. Like, we're making the most of every moment. It seems like every game it's either Ella Parker or Cassidy Pickering having a big moment. Maya Bland had a big moment in one of the games later in the RBI double for her, so a first-in-conference play for her. So taking advantage of their opportunities. And, and yeah, uh, Alina Torres, seven for her last 13 over the last six games with a 625 on-base percentage, a couple home runs. So, uh, yeah, it's it, – it's, uh, if you can get that kind of production from somebody outside of your TRA Jennings, your Jada Coleman, your Kinsey Hansen, like it, it just what it's what makes this lineup so dangerous for Oklahoma. Yeah, we would be uh, wrong to not at least bring up the Kinsey Hansen uh, uh, injury situation because Patty Gasso did address this in a press conference this week, talking about how day to day. Uh, is what this injury is. It was a little tweak in the knee, I believe, is what she referred to in her quote. Uh, I highly doubt they're going to throw uh, her out there tonight uh, to catch behind the plate or even EH. Uh, I think the earliest we see her is probably this weekend at the earliest. And and, and I don't even know, maybe something that uh, they don't even use her this weekend. But Ludlam has done well. Ludlam's done well. There There was a scare with her hand a little bit, but seems to be fine after that. Yeah, if there's any sort of concern with Kenzie Hansen on day to day, today's not the day to play. Uh, it, it's a game that you should be able to completely get by without her uh, against a 10 and 16 team that allows a lot of runs and really uh, doesn't put up that many runs themselves. Uh, maybe Love's Field changes that. They only have 13 run, home runs on the year entering today. Uh, maybe the kind of the I don't, I don't know what it is about Love's Field, but it seems like that ball just flies and flies a long ways. And Sydney Sanders back at Love's Field today. Does she get a home run? I think so. It's hard to count out Sydney Sanders right now on this just crazy stretch she is on at Love's Field. Yeah, and what's crazy is her home runs are definitely up, but now what we've noticed is the walks are up. Uh, she's getting walked more. She's being patient. And she's hitting the ball hard. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't know. We'll have to come up with the name of it for Love's Field because it definitely seems like the ball flies out of there uh, more so than others. But tonight, 6 o'clock, be a little bit on the chilly side maybe at 6 o'clock as the sun gets going down around 8. But uh, excited for the Sooners to be back home. Again, you can catch that game on ESPN Plus, uh, Sooner Vision uh, carrying that game. And then uh, the big series coming up this weekend. But, uh, let's get by this one, hopefully, in run, run, in run, roll fashion. Thanks again for watching the content. Again, you can check out the link for the March Madness Surgeaholic Group. Also, check out FanStop at FanStop.com. We'll make sure we have a post-game uh, video, so make sure you're subscribed to our content. You turn on those notifications. Till next time, Boomer.